President, as I come to the floor today, I want to acknowledge that we have had an active shooter situation in Collierville, Tennessee, right outside of Memphis. And we've spoken with authorities. We have local, state, and federal authorities. We are aware that there are uh, 13 individuals that have been shot. The shooter is dead. But we're very grateful for law enforcement that have stepped up in this situation and prayerful for those that have been adversely impacted and have been victims of this shooting situation. Mr. President, I ask that I have permission to complete my remarks before the scheduled vote. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. This week, we've heard from many of my Democratic colleagues about the various ways that Republicans have supposedly dragged this country to the brink of collapse. But what they've ignored in their manufactured hysteria and disgust in some parts is the fact that it is indeed Democrats who have control of the entire United States government at this point. And it was the Democrats who chose to govern alone starting on day one of the Biden administration. Over the past eight months, Joe Biden and his Democratic friends have indulged their worst instincts and taken unprecedented steps to bring every single aspect of American life under the control of the federal government. They are the ones who are now threatening the American people with shutdowns and default, rather than using the tools at their disposal to raise the debt ceiling and fund the government. They are the ones who chose to squander the trust of the American people on a spending spree that would waste trillions of dollars on liberal pet projects and a rapidly expanding welfare state. The Democrats have repeatedly claimed that these programs will make us happier, healthier, wealthier, freer, but in reality, their agenda has done nothing but make things worse. Historic spending has given rise to historic inflation that is on track to stay with us until the end of Joe Biden's presidency. In Tennessee, it's one of the things that I hear about most. Groceries are more expensive than ever. Gas prices are at a seven-year high. Rent has skyrocketed along with natural gas prices, which are set to break a decade-old record just in time for colder weather to set in. It's bad for hardworking taxpayers. They're tired of it. According to the Wall Street Journal, not even a well-earned hourly raise will be enough to pull these workers out of the hole. Inflation is so bad, it has negated the budget padding these people should be enjoying from bigger paychecks. Pay adjusted for inflation actually fell, Mr. President. It fell half a percent in August. These aren't luxuries. The policies advocated by the Democrats have made life itself too expensive to afford. From the second they wake up in the morning to the moment that their head hits the pillow at night, the American people are bleeding cash, paying higher taxes, and some are beginning to lose hope. And still, the Democrats insist that if we surrender even more control, all will be well. Well, that talking point might work when you're talking to the camera, but it's not going to work on the people. It's not working on Tennesseans because they understand that ceding control means surrendering freedom. And freedom is about all that we have left. When I talk to Tennesseans, they're not holding back how they feel about this so-called transformative agenda. For them, this isn't just a battle of ideas. They're fighting a war against the onslaught of radical socialism. They're afraid of Joe Biden's runaway White House because they've seen how destructive the administration's unilateral decisions can be. They've watched thousands of jobs evaporate and the southern border turned into a lawless war zone because the president wanted it 
this way. So here's what Tennesseans want to know, Mr. President. If they can't trust the Democrats to do the bare minimum, why should they trust that even more spending and more centralized control and more big government will work out in their favor? They've had eight months worth of proof that the exact opposite is true. This country might be hanging on by a thread. For my part, I'll listen to my fellow Tennesseans and will play no role in facilitating the erosion of freedom and the dignity of American life. I implore my colleagues in the majority, listen to the people. They have the right to live their lives on their own terms, not with lockdowns and mandates, on their terms. They don't want to have to depend on a government check to feed themselves or get their children back to school. There is a reason that our Constitution is one of the enumerated federal powers. It is not the place of Congress or the executive to flip this concept on its head and force the American people to justify their right to live free from this destructive cycle of debt and dependency. Our rights come from God, and I assure you, no government body could ever improve upon them. I yield the floor.